Hey guys, so uh, I'm back with uh, a new game, it's called uh, Rogue State, and uh, I assure you it's fun for the whole family, so uh, so bring your friends and bring your, bring your children. I think even grandma can watch this, I don't know though, we'll find out. Because this is what YouTube is now, YouTube is uh, child friendly fun for the whole family, uh, fun. Anyways, uh, so I'm going to start a game, uh, in hard mode, and we're gonna do a Petroleum Theocracy. And let's see how this turns out. We're going live in three... Unfortunately, the, the intro there doesn't, uh, work on my recorder, so we're gonna skip it. And we're playing as Hillary Clinton for fun, you know. Uh, so let's let's get started. Let's uh, start by uh, reading this here. So as glorious leader of the newly formed People's Republic of the Senji, you elect to set your office in the royal palace of the late tyrant king. Outside, hundreds of workers dismantle the blood-stained barricades installed by the monarchs last year, another painful reminder of all that was lost in the war. Key revolutionary figures across the spectrum of political ideologies are now selfishly looking to be rewarded with appointments to inner circle cabinet positions. So that's what we're dealing with right now. We have these three here, uh, who helped us during the revolution and are now looking for political favors. And we have our brother, uh, Farouk Clinton, uh, who we also have to provide a cabinet position to. And whatever we end up giving our brother uh, will negatively affect us. So for example, as finance minister, uh, our brother Farouk over here will try to funnel $5 million a turn into his private account. So you don't want that to happen. You want to give him the most useless position uh, you possibly can. I think in this case uh, that would be intelligence. Aside from that, uh, we're role-playing as Clinton, so... We obviously want. We obviously love capitalists and patriots, so this this works out really well for us. So we'll make sure that the the capitalist gets a uh, finance minister and foreign minister. Uh, no. Right, and our patriot will be our communications minister. That sounds about right. As for Defense Minister, we don't really need this, at least I've never needed this position that much. So I'm just going to leave it as is. Excellency, my name is Tariq Badur, as Parliamentary Chief of Protocol it is my duty to ensure that your instructions reach our parliamentarians. I trust you have settled into your new office? May I offer some suggestions on our first steps to restoring order to Bajinj? We're gonna skip the tutorial and I'll just explain uh, whatever I, I can. Because this is, a, this is actually a pretty straightforward game uh, once you get the hang of it. No, leave me alone. As you wish, Excellency. So if you guys haven't uh, played this game before, I'll try to explain some things that are... Uh... And we're, we're gonna ignore that phone call, because I don't know... Uh, I have to check other things first. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open borders. Obviously, because you're playing as Clinton, we want that. Uh, we want the money that comes from completely open borders. Uh, 
we can uh, we can throw around some rhetoric <clears throat> about uh, how we're gonna clamp down a little bit on immigration, but I don't think that Hillary is actually doing that yet, or is doing that at all, because it's not politically expedient uh, right now. So what else can we do? Oh, yeah, I think I should just go through everything to uh, to explain. Uh... Okay, let's so so let's start with uh, infrastructure here. So the big thing happening right now in this game is that uh, we just came out of a revolution. Our country is in shambles. So uh, a big part of what we're doing early on in the game is reconstructing uh, our uh, our country. So. All of these, uh, all of these different uh, tabs here, are parts of the uh, the country or infrastructure that we need to rebuild. So, let's uh, restore water and sewage to the country, and that will that will increase our tax revenue. And then we'll also allow in uh, foreign aid workers to uh, help with the reconstruction of uh, our buildings and our infrastructure. And sometimes when we uh, when we click on these tabs, we get uh, additional options. So we can allow in foreign aid workers uh, to tend to the sick and wounded civilian population, but we lose three million dollars on healthcare costs. Or we could allow in uh, foreign aid workers to uh, speed up the infrastructure uh, building. This will give us additional military approval, and it will uh, obviously speed up the uh, reconstruction effort. So we're going to do that one. And we can also rebuild uh, power infrastructure and uh, restore most of the electricity in our country. So let's do that. As for these other options, we have to wait. Uh, we have to wait till turn two to uh, work on these projects, and turn three to work on these projects here. So, I'll close this for now. Um, F1 is our policies, and we can uh, definitely adjust our policies. So let's explain what's happening here. So you have four factions uh, in the society. You have the patriots, the capitalists, the fundamentalists, and the liberals. And you, as Hillary Clinton, we want to pander to all of these groups. Uh, not so much the liberals, but yeah, definitely fundamentalists, capitalists, and patriots. But if we can get away with it, we want to pander to everybody. So let's do that. Let's start with uh, minimum wage. I know that she uh, she flipped her position during the at the end of the primary to uh, fifteen dollars. Um, so I think we can reflect that by paying off a uh, low minimum wage. It's the amount of uh, money that uh, people in Iran, Ecuador, and Hungary make. I uh, don't know if that's a living wage or not, but uh, I'm gonna leave it like that because it has no negative uh, side effects. As for work visas, I think they're fine the way they are. Uh, I know if you increase the work visas, that has a negative effect on patriots. Um, but if you decrease them, then capitalists will hate you. And capitalists kind of already hate us, so let's not do that. Let's uh, let's uh, let's uh, pander to the liberals with the transport system. Um, how does education affect? Uh, makes the liberals uh, happy, but I know Hillary Clinton uh, flipped on this position. She's uh, more in favor of helping students uh, pay out their debt. Uh, it's not the Bernie Sanders position, but it's uh, it's better than nothing, I guess. And uh, I'm also doing this because obviously it improves GDP. 
Uh, death penalty. I know that uh, even during the primary, she told a person that survived the uh, the death penalty, a completely innocent person who uh, who could have been killed as a result of the death penalty. She practically s told the guy that uh, she was in favor of it. So uh, we'll leave it like this. In terms of uh, oh free trade, free trade is something I know Hillary is uh, really into. It helps us with jobs, GDP, and corruption, so that's all good. Uh, social services, uh, that's like ponies and rainbows, right? So let's look for uh, something else. Uh, gambling prohibition. Um, no, we love capitalists. We love money. So we got to work on that. That increases crime, though. Hmm. Should we leave it just like this? Oh, we also, for prayer week, uh, we do have to pander to uh, the religious. I don't know if I can get away with banning prayer week. And that's not really something Clinton would do, that's something I would do, so uh, let's not touch that. I think it's okay the way it is right now. Uh, if I was playing a serious game, I would definitely, uh, I definitely do the voluntary prayer week leave. I think that's the more liberal position, right? Let me see. Oh, sorry, yeah, prayer week not practiced. But um, this, this negatively affects not only fundamentalists, it also negatively affects uh, the Karifi population, so we're gonna leave it alone. It doesn't even really help us that much. It just makes uh, capitalist neutral towards us. And I think that's all we can do, really, for now. Uh, if we start having crime issues, I'll play around with the sliders again. I'd love to move it all the way here. Actually, that wouldn't even hurt us that much. Oh, and also we gotta have good law enforcement to handle corruption. So, uh, our fundamentalists still don't like us. Maybe if we... Uh... Oh, then they both dislike us. I mean, if only the liberals dislike us, it's not too big a deal. I think this will, I think this will be okay. So yeah, we'll do an alcohol consumption ban. Doesn't really fit into the character of Hillary. It's more of a prohibition thing, but um, you know, this this gives us uh, reasonable support from all factions. It neutralizes fundamentalists and capitalists. Uh, patriots still love us for whatever reason. And liberals only slightly dislike us. So, uh, so what else is here? So you have uh, parliament and cabinet. And this shows you kind of your, your favorability among uh, your parliaments. So our approval rating uh, our approval rating is less than 40 percent so parliament's loyalty towards us is reduced by two every uh, every turn. This just means that they start to dislike us uh, more and more every turn. And then liberals are rioting for whatever reason so that's also losing us uh, 
loyalty points. Uh, I'll show you where loyalty points is uh, after this, but uh, loyalty points essentially work uh, in this sense. When you reach 100 loyalty points, uh, you can start uh, accumulating additional loyalty points that end up in your, your bank. And you can use those points to buy uh, influence either between other nations that you're neighboring or in your own country to uh, you can get uh, favorability from uh, different factions. For example, um, you can have uh, you can buy an invitation an invitation to host a prayer from a mountain, and this will pander to fundamentalists. You can buy a, a dinner with the uh, WTO director. I think that's the World Trade Organization, and that will. Uh, that will help you pander better to capitalists. Uh, you can also um, you can also buy tanks, and you can you can uh, do a little bit of uh, it's not really an exploit. I think it was intended, uh, but you can make a lot of money by uh, buying tanks and selling them later on. Uh, but the most useful thing I found is uh, the newspaper publications. Uh, so when you bank enough loyalty points, which is only 30 really, uh, you can start using these uh, newspaper publications to boost your relations with your uh, your neighbors. And this is a really good way to avoid uh, nasty conflicts with uh, your neighbors. Your loyalty points are shown uh, here, so we're losing negative 5 per turn and we have 60, so we definitely want to approve this as, as fast as we can. Uh, this is our treasury as well, and we're at negative uh, 8 million per turn. We want to do what we can about that. Our approval rating is really bad right now. Let's see. So you've seen uh, Tariq. Uh, we don't have to deal with the phone uh, anytime uh, soon because uh, we don't have any uh, we don't have any resources to trade, so there's no point really in talking to our neighbors right now. Uh, the regional map you've seen this shows us uh, shows us our neighbors. It shows them what resource it shows us what resources they they have, so we can trade for them if we really need to. Uh, what else? Oh, the newspaper. So, in this game, uh, after you end your turn, which we haven't yet, um, an event will pop up, and we'll have a bunch of options to choose from. Uh, once those option, once we choose a specific option, uh, when we return to the uh, this this main uh, this main area here, and we look in the newspaper. Uh, whatever option we select will be the headline in the newspaper, and everything else will kind of be just like um, kind of jokes. A lot of them based on the policies that you've chosen. Uh, and if you haven't uh, switched any policies, it'll it'll just be uh, default kind of uh, jokes. So. Th so there's this page, and there's also uh, this page here, which is a little bit more informative. It tells you what the social hierarchy of uh, the Basenji society looks like. And it also gives you your approval rating for every single faction. It's not really necessary to check the newspaper for that, because you can see all that information down here. But you know, sometimes it's nice to look in the newspaper for uh, for different headlines and stuff. Uh, unlockables. Uh, so there's this portrait of uh, Jean Leon Jerome here. If you click on this portrait, uh, these will be your unlockables. Uh, you get these unlockables uh, through experience. So after winning a game, you get a specific amount of experience. 
and uh, you can use that experience to purchase different uh, different bonuses. For example, um, the ability to make jokes uh, uh, for, when you're talking to your neighbors, uh, the ability to flatter people of the opposite sex. You can talk to the uh, to the leader of Chicken Stand. I don't know if we have Chicken Stand as a neighbor. I'll check it out later. And uh, Petroleum Theocracy. That's what we're playing as right now. So you can get all these different options. Uh, you can buy them with uh, the experience points. But we don't need to worry about that because I have all the uh, bonuses. There's also this encyclopedia here. And it gives you uh, information about uh, other nations. Uh, whatever this nation is called, Xania, Kal Kalshara. Uh, the Karif are like the ethnic minorities that live inside of your uh, country and uh, you have to balance relations with them as well. You can do that through policy, you can do that through events, uh, but they do become important later on depending on how far you get into the game. Uh, there's the US also that you have to deal with in terms of relations. Uh, there's information on your brother Farouk, and also, I think, your personal general. There's, there's a bit of information here that you can, uh, you can look at to, uh, to get a better feel of uh, the history behind uh, all these events that are happening in the game. And finally, you can go into the Situation Room. And the Situation Room uh, is used for military purposes, so you can go to your procurement officer and you can pick up various uh, military armaments, uh, tanks, uh, batteries, uh, fighter squadrons, uh, soldiers, and uh, later on, uh, drones, but they haven't shown up yet. And uh, this is our general uh, Nader. Do you have any orders, Excellency? He's uh, he's very he used to be very good at winning over millennials, but uh, since then he's uh, kind of been a hack. Uh, so we can check our military morale. What morale with the, the armed forces are satisfied with your leadership. They know. And we can also uh, check out strategic assessments. It's pretty much like uh, military intelligence on uh, various countries. But Thanks. right now we don't have any information about those countries, so that's pointless. Um, we have this modder here, clandestine operations. And this is where we can uh, launch secret projects. We could uh, build uh, nuclear uh, weapons, we could uh, create a national space program, we can uh, build a hydroelectric dam, we could uh, create a great firewall, hire an assassin, or uh, you know construct a time machine and uh, go back to, uh, to a previous turn. Uh, some of these aren't uh, available yet because we have to build uh, certain uh, structures to, uh, to initiate them. And then finally we have our strategic overview. And this is, uh, this is the map of uh, the region. Uh, Basenji is not here, we're, we're an invisible nation I guess. But uh, here are all of our uh, opponents, uh, Sania, Kalshara, and Trajikistan. And uh, we could choose to attack them or uh, redeploy our forces elsewhere. Uh, for now everything looks fine.
I don't think we're gonna have to deal with our neighbors uh, right away. So yeah, that's everything that we really have to uh, to consider or worry about right now. So I'm gonna do one last thing. Uh, I'm gonna go to Treasury. Our income right now is fourteen uh, percent, so I don't know if we can risk. I'm gonna do something really cheesy to make some extra money, and uh, this is kind of a risk. I don't know how it's gonna turn out, but uh, let's see how it goes. Let's raise the tax tax revenue to 50%. Oh, gee. Okay, so we got a really bad event right off the bat. A uh, former advisor to the late king is in exile somewhere in Sanya. He appears to be in possession of some of our state secrets and could pose a threat to the success of our special projects. And we can't do anything right now, so... Uh, that ruins our, our chance to create special projects. Uh, okay, we'll pick up the phone this time, I guess. Greetings, Your Excellency. I am President Hamar Saab, and on behalf of Sania, I wanted to be the first to welcome the liberation of the People's Republic of Basenji from the tyranny of the Salman family. The Salman regime was a threat to the whole region. That is why we provided your rebellion with the weaponry and training necessary to overthrow the tyrants. Once the transitional government has restored Basenji's infrastructure and industry, let us work towards restoring our trade relationships. Do not hesitate to contact me if there is any way Sania can be of assistance to you. Thank you for your call. I am certain our two great nations will work together to bring great prosperity to the region. There is much work to be done, but I am grateful for your country's support. So, there's nothing really we could talk to him about uh, right now. Two hunters are out in the woods when one of them collapses. He doesn't seem to be breathing. So the other hunter pulls out his cell phone and calls emergency services. He cries out to the operator, My friend is dead! What can I do? The operator says, calm down, I can help. First, let's make sure he's dead. There is a silence. Then a gunshot is heard. Back on the phone, the hunter says, okay, now what? <laughs> Tough crowd. Yeah, apparently. All right, so, uh, so let's get out of this. Goodbye. I don't know if I can uh, stomach a guy with no humor. Uh, okay, so um, we made 324 uh, million dollars. Or did we start with this? We probably started with this. So let's uh, let's work on restoring the next uh, part of our infrastructure. Uh, we'll restore our financial services and capitalists obviously uh, like that. And we'll rebuild telecommunications uh, infrastructure. So television, radio, and internet will be brought under state control and made available to ma the majority of the country. Sounds good to me. Uh, as for these two, we're gonna have to wait a whole turn for them. And how are relations doing? Yeah, I'm I'm afraid of riots, so I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the tax rate down to something reasonable again. And uh, can we do anything else right now? Take a look in the newspaper if they see it, if they say anything about the headline. 
so Rising Sea threatens Marshall Islands. Uh, climate conference attendees show limited interest. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I love some of these headlines, like, uh... Okay, so we, we are going to reduce taxes, so they should say something about it here. Approval rating is abysmal among uh, liberals. Uh, fundamentalists, capitalists, and patriots are, are not too sure if they should like us or not. So uh, this is just how things are at the start of the game. Hopefully things get better, and they get better fast, because uh, I need to fix this loyalty issue. Uh, so it is Basenji National Day. The media is wondering what celebrations you have planned. Uh, we're gonna... We're gonna do the standard, because uh, I want to keep... Uh, our relations good with all these uh, different factions. So uh, our, one of our ministers is requesting that we boost our popularity with capitalists to 60%. Uh, so we got five turns to, uh, to try to do that. I'm going to go straight to infrastructure uh, right now. And we're going to restore state industries. And by doing this, we're going to actually uh, receive two different resources. Now, because we're playing the uh, petroleum theocracy, one of these resources is going to be oil. It's going to be very beneficial to us. Because, uh, as it says here, uh, oil boosts the uh, US relationship I think by two every turn, or something like that. And you receive an extra two million dollars uh, per turn in export revenue. So, all that is, uh, is very useful. And then we're going to restore the uh, justice system. And essentially this... What we're doing is putting the senior commander commanders of the former king's armies on trial for war crimes and determining what their sentence should be. So we have two options for this. We could uh, grant them amnesty or we could uh, imprison them. Uh, I don't trust uh, monarchist filling my cabinet. Uh, my cabinet's already disloyal enough as it is, so we're gonna imprison these people. And uh, by finishing the reconstruction process, uh, we have access to new uh, infrastructure categories. Uh, we have security, we have society, and we have trade and diplomacy. This is the economic uh, tab. This is like the social policy tab for like uh, healthcare and education. And obviously this is like the military and national defense tab. So as Hillary, the, our first priority is to uh, make money for capitalists and uh, build really good trade relations. And we want to get the uh, offshore mega rig as fast as possible because it gives us a 20% increase in tax revenue. So that's what we're going to do. But uh, we're going to do that in another episode because this one's running uh, 35 minutes long at this point. So uh, until then, uh, see you guys later. And uh, take care. And thanks for watching, by the way.